Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am greatly flattered by this award from Gemini Inc. and deeply touched by the presence of you all. It gives it a kind of friendly approval. I regret not being among you to express my gratitude in person, but circumstances prevent it. The phrase lifetime achievement has a solemn sound. It calls up hours and hours of application to tasks under many conditions and for many purposes. It also suggests that anyone who lives beyond the regulation three score years and 10 must have achieved a good deal or he would have been bored to death earlier. That's a paradox it won't do to think of. Instead, what I think of is that lifetime is by no means the purely individual affair that we tend to imagine. It is a collective enterprise in which some participants are conscious of their input and many more are not. As I look back at the beginning of my lifetime, at the beginning of that achievement so generously referred to this evening, I see first of all family and notably a great grandmother who took a special interest in me from infancy. She lived on the same block as my family and every day on my way home from the lycée shortly after four o'clock I would stop by and see her. She would give me the traditional bun and square of chocolate and we would talk for about half an hour or so. She was born in 1830 and liked to reminisce. What she told me of her life, the events, crises, notables that she'd been close to gave me a sense of the past. It made school history real and when about seven years old I wrote a history of France in eight double pages. Not for class but on my own. It stopped rather short at Joan of Arc and I had to explain to my obtuse elders that that was as far as the class had gone. My parents formed my lifetime in another way. <clears throat> they belonged <coughs> to the literary and artistic avant-garde of the early 20th century and the house was always full of writers and painters, musicians and critics. I became convinced that life was, a purpose, was for the purpose of writing or pursuing one of the arts. Besides, we lived in a part of Paris that in earlier times had been the favored country retreat of Benjamin Franklin, Balzac, Chopin, and their kind. The streets were all named after them and they confirmed my view that the world was designed for intellect and art. <clears throat> At the same time, I was going to one of the best lycées in Paris and my teachers were at once strict and popular. I owe them a solid grounding in method which is as important as the substance of study itself. Next, the experience of the First World War was formative and after that <clears throat> I owe valuable <coughs> uh, obligation to the host of persons, those first who made my path easier when I first came to this country and <clears throat> whom I remember with a special gratitude and after them the innumerable contacts of friendship and professional life. Obviously they had their share in whatever I did and among them in particular the colleagues of half a century at Columbia whom <coughs> I was extremely fond of. Some of the unremembered casual encounters must also have had their importance in encouraging, facilitating or making a direct contribution to that achievement 
which I decline to regard as a private possession, homemade out of a set of unique talents. That being so, it is in the name of my crowd of collaborators that I tender my thanks to Gemini Inc. for the best of prizes, affectionate recognition. <laughs> Yeah, much much too uh, generous, but uh, 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 I'm glad you feel that way about me. <laughs> You're most kind, most kind. <clears throat>